Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Wendy Lyon, who's the financial lion who helps clients create their legacy. Wendy, welcome to the program. Hi, Mike. Thanks so much for having me. Hey, so I wonder why on your website you use like a picture of a lion and talk about legacy. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a great play on words. I love that. So the financial <laughs> lion, that is so cool. And um, I'm excited to talk to you about how, how you help people rule the financial jungle. Give us a little bit of your background and entrepreneurial journey up to this point in your career. Well, let me tell you um, a little bit of my background. My husband died in a motorcycle accident when he was only 24. Wow. And we had a one and a three-year-old, and he had a life insurance. Because who thinks I'm going to wake up and die today when you're in your 20s, right? Right. So he had a life insurance policy that you get free from your employer. You know, it was for six months of his employment. So back then, this is in the 80s, he was making 40000 a year. So his his insurance policy was for twenty. Well, how long do you think that that twenty thousand dollars lasted? Yeah, in theory, six months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and here's how: when people say, "I don't know how much life insurance I need," here's a very simple formula to figure it out. Because if I asked you, "What's your most of your most valuable asset in your life?" Your mind might go to your four hundred one k, or how much you have in savings, or what the equity in your home is worth. But I try to get through to people that you are your most valuable asset. Yeah. It's your ability to go out and earn an income that will be destroyed if you are taken out of the picture. So my husband was 24. Just for easy math, say he was going to retire, retire at 64 and he was making 40000 a year. The gap that he left in our life was $1.6 million. Yeah. Not twenty thousand. Yeah, so right. <laughs> if you're making it, you know what I mean. So that's a very easy formula to say. What would the economic vacuum be if he passed away? Yeah. And for stay-at-home moms that think, well, I don't work and earn a living, I want to tell them: if you had to be replaced, the taxi driver, the tutor, the seamstress, the yep. cook, the cleaner, the gardener, the everything you do, it would take ninety-six thousand dollars a year to replace you. Yeah. So please don't downplay, oh, well, I don't work. I'm just a stay-at-home mom. That's a very valuable service that you're providing. Yep. You know, I've, and I've heard if it your done. husband had to replace those, that's what it would cost him. So. Yep. Your example there made me think of something I heard years and years and years ago. Um, I forget even where I heard this, but it was like an example of like someone comes to your house and says, hey, I've got this machine. It is totally legal, but I put it down in the basement. And what it does is we plug it in and it cranks out hundred dollar bills, you know, like 10, 20, 30 uh, per minute. And you just cranks it out 24 seven. And, and, and here's the, uh, a letter from the government saying this is legal. And you're like, great. And you're like, I'm going to put it down in your basement and, and it's totally free. It's just a bonus for you. Um, but I think I, I should tell you that it may be once a month I need to come back and just tune it up to make sure it keeps cranking it out. Would that make sense? Oh, yeah, of course. Well, there's a little fee, a little maintenance fee for that, so I need to make sure. And obviously the example is your life is cranking out those bills for years yeah. to come, and you want to make sure that it's protected, and then here comes life insurance. And I do feel like, you know, like you just said, the example of, of, that you just gave, why do people in their 20s and 30s need it? Check that box. We just talked about it. But here's a thought, too. When you hear the term life insurance, I think people start to feel like, oh, come on. On. Grandma told me this, and oh, you shouldn't get that. So, what are some of those things that people have in their mind where it's like, oh, life insurance, really? What are some of those misconceptions that people have? Well, I think the biggest misconception is that most people only knew, know about term insurance, yeah. which is like renting an apartment, right? So, you have it for a certain period of time and then it ends. But you live, the average life expectancy increased by. Uh, and, and between 20, 2000 and 2010, they changed the actuarial tables to go up to age 121. Wow. 
So if you get a term policy at 40, if you're a married man, your average age is 85. So what good is that going to do you? Yeah. Now, the benefit of term, term is good for death. They do have other benefits in it. So if you got diagnosed with a terminal illness and you had a year to live, you can accelerate half of the death benefit, things like that. So there are other benefits in there. Um, the biggest benefit of term, other than it's, it's very inexpensive. And the reason that that is, is because the life insurance companies know that you're not going to die. The odds are that you will not die during that term, right? Mm. So that's why it's so inexpensive. Yeah. The benefit of term is that you can get a temporary policy. So if you're 40 and you get one, you can convert it to something permanent later on. So you are covered for your whole entire life. And the benefit of that is say you're 40 and you're in great health and you get a preferred rating because it's all about your health and your age. That's the older you get and the unhealthier you are, the more you're going to pay for life insurance. Yep. So don't wait. I have a lot of people that call me up and they're 70 and they're thinking, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to die probably in the next five years. So can I get insurance now? And it's like, oh, well, you've had 37 surgeries. You have sleep yeah. apnea. You've got yeah. chronic disease. No, no one's going to give you insurance. <laughs> so if they did, you when you need it the, the most premium. is when you can, you're not going to get approved for it more likely yeah. than not. I mean, hopefully you're in good aid, good health, but, um, the benefit of getting it when you're young, and I'm talking about not term insurance. Why would you get that when you're young? That's just, you you know what I mean? That's just silly. Yeah. If it's all you can afford, it's not silly. It's better to have that than nothing. Don't get me wrong. But you asked, why would someone get insurance when they're young? You know, it's called life insurance. Yeah. All the living benefits of yeah. life insurance are there. So let me just give you an example that will blow you out of the water. I had a 28-year-old. A lot of my clients are business owners. So I like to write policies that are flexible. So if you have a bad six months, a bad year, COVID hits, whatever, this plan is not going to go by the wayside because two to three years into it, the cash in the policy can pay for the premium for an entire year. Oh, wow. So I had a 28-year-old, and she was like, Wendy, I trust you. I'm not going anywhere else. I'm not going to compare. You came highly referred. Just tell me what's the best thing I can do. So we just said, you know, what amount monthly are you comfortable with? So she, we ran a number of illustrations. I leave no stone unturned. I mean, I want to find out what's going to be the best thing for my client's buck. We put her into a policy that throughout the course of her life, now remember, she's 28. So we did a $500 premium, but out of that, 250 of it, she could choose to pay or not to pay. So if she had a bad month, she didn't have to pay that. If she had a great month, she could make up for a bad month when she didn't pay it. So through the course of her life, through 65, she was going to put in $300,000 into that policy. But you know what that turns into? $4.6 million. In death benefit? That or is in the cash? beauty of getting a permanent life insurance policy when you're young. And that $4.6 million is death benefit or is that cash accumulation? It's cash value. That's, that's a big distinguishing factor. And at the end of – pardon me? That's a big distinguishing point is a lot of people think, oh, that's death benefit. But when you talk about cash value, that's, that's access to that you can get now while you're living. Yes. And unlike a 401k that you can't access to your 59 and a half without a 10% penalty, the cash in a life insurance policy, you can access whenever it's there. Yeah. And it is the only place on the planet that you can get a non-recourse loan, meaning say I have a policy for $500,000 and I borrow 20 grand because I'm going to take my family on a trip. If I don't want to pay that $20,000 back, I don't have to. No creditor is going to call me. Yeah. My FICO score is not going to go down. All that's going to happen is that plus any interest accrued is going to be deducted from the death benefit when I die. Yeah, wow. So it's the only place you can do that. The other thing that's great is there's only two places that you can put your money where you don't pay tax on the growth. One is a Roth IRA, and one is a life insurance policy. 
Now, if you're making two hundred, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars a year, how much is putting fifty five hundred dollars, which is the cap, right, on a Roth until you get older? How much is that going to offset your taxes? It's yeah, not going to pebble, not gonna make a dent. Yeah, right. But you decide how much you want to put into a life insurance policy. Do you want to put in fifty grand a year? A hundred, you know, whatever you decide. And so that's why a lot of wealthy people, you'll see on my LinkedIn, I say, making the secrets of the wealthy available to the masses. And this is what wealthy people do. They put their money into life insurance policies so much. Warren Buffett's a pretty smart guy, right? He owns 37 whole life policies. And, you know, I've heard this somewhere. And so you can correct me if I'm wrong or clarify, but this is not a new thing. This is not a twist that's a loophole. This is something that's been around for 100 plus years. And oh, yeah. many of the banks and large corporations, they take their money and put it into life insurance to get the best, safest returns. Yes. Now, the client that I told you about, that my 28-year-old, she's going to have that money. She doesn't have to get up and watch the market. She doesn't have to worry that a butterfly flapped its wings in yep. Taiwan and the market yep. crashed two days later. Right. She, can, she can just sleep peacefully at night. She doesn't have to do another thing. And by IRS law, at the end of a permanent life insurance policy, the cash value has to equal the death benefit. So she has 4.6 million. Well, she's got that at 65. It grows up beyond that afterwards. And a lot of people, let me just say this. A lot of people don't like whole life. It got a bad rap. And I know Dave Ramsey and Susie Orman trash it all the time. But if you are making an, I can tell you can make nine to 15% in a permanent life insurance policy all day long. If you were going to add 15 to 20% of capital gains tax on that, like you would if you may put it in the market, so you would have to gross 35% each year, every year, to clear 10. Because of taxes, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So one of the things that I try to tell people is don't chase rates of return. Because I'll give you a quick analogy. If I said, hey, Mike, I can, I can guarantee you that you're going to average uh, 25% in your portfolio for the next two years. You'd be like, oh, sounds good to me, Randy, right? Yeah, tell me so more. So let's, <laughs> let's just say for the first year, we make a 50% return. And you're, like, you're thrilled. Your portfolio has gone up by 50%. The next year, we lose 50%. So I've still guaranteed you, you still made 25% for those two years, right? You still mm -hmm. made a 25% average. But here's the thing. You had to pay capital gains tax. I know Biden was trying to make you pay taxes even without selling a stock, that you would have to pay capital gains just because it increased in your portfolio. Mm. So you would end up worse off. You made your 25%, but if you had to pay capital gains tax, you actually lost money in that transaction. Right? Yeah. And you never got, and you never got the benefit of the funds. <laughs> and, and you never got the benefit of the funds. Yeah, that. <laughs> and, and you end up right back where you started, but you got your 25% average yeah. for, you know, gain. So there, I mean, there is a place, and there's also there's all sorts of permanent life insurance policies. There's indexed universal life. There's guaranteed universal. You know, there's a whole plethora of them. And that's why you want to talk to a financial professional, because until I got into this industry, I did not have a clue. You know, yeah, you don't hear about you term. Google put your money in go, 401k. Give me whole life permanent check. Set it up. <laughs> right, yeah. You've, you've got to um, set it up, and there's things that you have to consider. It's got to be done the right way. Exactly. And you want a fiduciary. You want someone who has your best interests at heart. Okay. When I write policies, the reason my clients get so much cash value in their policies is because of the way I write them. And having that flexibility in there, remember I told you the premium was 250 and then she had an extra amount she could pay of 250 It's that extra amount that may, it's like putting the policy on steroids. It just makes it grow 
so much faster. And the reason a lot of agents won't write them like that is because that 250 instead of getting, I'll make it up, a 55% commission on that, you only get three. Oh. And you only get that 3% commission if they pay that extra money. So a lot of, you know, I've had agents come to me and go, well, look, if I write it this way, I'll make this much. And if I write it that way, I'll only make this much. And I said, you have to do what's best for the client. I think yeah. if you if you do the right thing, success will follow. And I would rather have a lot of beautiful, bright futures. You know, on my website, wendylion.com, you'll see, I'll make your future so bright, you're going to need sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> Remember that song way back in the day from Tim Buck Three. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the future so bright, so, I've got to wear shades. <laughs> right, right. So I would much rather do that and have a lot of happy clients that yeah. refer me. Look what Wendy did for my future. I'm like set for life. I don't have to worry about a thing. Then, oh, well, this is kind of okay, but I'm not really happy with it. And you know, maybe it's, you know, it's not performing the way I thought it would. So why do I have, you know, that kind of thing. hundred percent. So that's well, what makes a, a huge difference. It really does. And and I think a lot of people here, you know, fiduciary, and they like, eh, what? but you're like obligated by law to do the right thing for a client. And if you don't, then there's some consequences to Wendy. So that's something to really, to really know about when you're talking to a financial professional is to make sure that they really are going to, Treat you right. Yeah, just ask them, are you commission driven? <laughs> yeah. I am not driven by commission. I am a people person. So I, I have money. I don't need to make my money off trying to, you know, make a few extra bucks off a policy that I write for you. Yep, because I want you long term and I want you to refer <laughs> me. And the only way you're going to do that is if, let's see here, oh, yeah, I treat you right. It's exactly. all about, you know, you hear the B2B, business to business, and B2C, business. It really is about H to H, human to human. Yes. You know? Yes. Good. Yes. I love that. And my clients and I become friends. I we have I have clients that we've been friends for years. We go away for the weekend and hang out and have a ball, and they're wonderful human beings. I love them all. That's awesome. Well, Wendy, what are some final thoughts that you would uh, say to wrap up and say, you know, if someone is listening to this going, maybe there's something that Wendy should maybe take a peek in on my finances to maybe get me some good uh, insights. What's the best uh, last thought and best way that they can reach out and connect with you? Well, they can go to wendylion.com. Let me tell you this. If you think you're a smarty pants, there is a financial IQ quiz on my website, and I double dare you to take it. Challenge. <laughs> 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 but they can, so they can go to wendylion.com. They can, and if you want to hear there, I've got it, several videos on there. I had an interview with John and Bradstreet. There's a video on there. Um, the three types of life insurance you need to know. So for people that don't have a clue, just go there. It's only a minute long and you can watch it. There's, Five Simple Steps to Success, all sorts of great information on there. And if they want to give me a call, uh, shoot me a text, because if you're not on my phone, I probably won't pick up. But shoot me a text at 760-390-9380, 760-390-9380. Awesome. Well, Wendy, thank you so much for coming on today. It was a real pleasure having you on the show. Thank you. It's been my pleasure, Mike. Thanks so much for having me. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.